Hello and welcome back to another Blendini tutorial. In this quick video, we're going to look at the geometry node setup for generating cactus spines, which is basically aligning instances to an object's normals. Geometry nodes allow for more flexibility and ease of use across a wide variety of models, so let's begin by making a few basic cactus shapes. Shift A to add a basic mesh. Iconosphere, the UV sphere, circle, and cylinder are all good starters. Whatever object you use, choose even segments or vertices when given the option. With a circle, tab into edit mode. A to select all of the vertices, go to the select menu and choose check deselect to select every other vertex. S to scale the selected vertices towards the center, A to select all of the vertices, E to extrude the shape up, Control R to add edge loops, and then use the scroll wheel to increase or decrease the number of loops added. With proportional editing enabled, scale the top inward. Then use the F key to fill in the selected top vertices. With a cylinder, add your edge loops, adjust the shape with proportional editing as desired, and then select every other edge and scale those inward using S. Tab into object mode and use Control A to apply rotation and scale to your cactus base. And now with the object set, we can go ahead and begin with our geometry node tree. Hovering your mouse over any area border brings up this double-headed arrow. Right-clicking brings up a menu that gives you the option to split the area vertically or horizontally. I'm going to split the viewport vertically and switch this editor to the geometry node editor. I'll use this object to build the geometry node tree. With the object selected, click on New to create a new geometry node group. If you don't see it right away, you may need to pan around the area by holding the scroll wheel, or zoom in and out by scrolling the scroll wheel. To find the nodes that I'm going to use here, shift A anywhere in the geometry node workspace and select the search option right here. Type in the name of the node you're looking for and select it from the list. We'll use instance on points, which will put instances on each of the points or vertices of the object. If you want to see the base object, you need to use join geometry to join the geometry of the instances to the geometry of your base object. Use a mesh primitive. I'm using cone to represent the spines. Adjust the size by reducing the vertex count, the bottom radius, and the depth. Align the cones to the object's normal with an align rotation to vector node. The vector we'll use is the normal, so we'll need a normal node to connect to the vector input. The factor input here gives you better control over the degree of alignment. Now let's create a vertex group that will include the vertices we want the spines to be attached to. Tab into edit mode to select the vertices you want spines to show on. Holding the alt key and selecting an edge will select all of the vertices along that edge. Go to the data tab and click this plus sign to add a new vertex group. Clicking a sign will add the selected vertices to this group. Connect the selection input to one of the group's output slots. On the Modifier tab, select the Geometry Node Modifier. Select this icon here, the Input Attribute Toggle. Any vertex groups you've created will appear here in this list. Select the group that has the vertices you want the spines attached to. To change the size of the spines, you can change the X, Y, Z values on the Instance on Points node. Add a combined X, Y, Z node and two Value Input nodes. Connect one value input to the X and Y inputs, and connect another value input to the Z input. Now, changing the X, Y values will change the width of the spines, or the thickness, and Z will change its length. To remove instances from vertices shown on your object, you can simply remove those vertices from the selected vertex group. To do this, select the vertices, and then go over to your vertex group, and click Remove. Thank you. 
if you want the length of the vertices to change based on their position, for example, having taller spines at the top of the cactus. We can do this by adding a position node and connecting it to a separate XYZ node. This allows us to only pull the data from the z-axis. Along the z-axis, the values increase with the height of the object. Depending on the size of your object, this effect may not be so noticeable. Adding a static value by using the math node can increase the effect. For an even more pronounced effect, you can use multiply in the math node. And if you want to reverse the effect, having the longer spines at the bottom of the object, you can use the math node's function of logarithms or power with a negative input value. You can also randomize the length of any value by using the random value node, which draws a value at random between a range you specify. If you add a subdivision surface node to the base geometry, either in the modifier stack or the geometry node tree, the instances may float above their intended contact point. Increasing the edge crease will add definition to the edges, and increasing vertex crease adds definition to the vertices. Both of these options can alleviate the floating instance issue. We can also add a set shade smooth node to our geometry tree to set shade smooth on the entire object. With the geometry node tree completed, you can apply it to any other object. Select the object, add a geometry node tree, and then select the spines tree that you've just created. Notice this looks backwards. This is a good indication that the normals may be flipped. We can fix this easily by going to Mesh, Normals, and then selecting Flip or Recalculate Outside. This will correct the object's normals and correct our instances. With this shape, the spines are floating. With local space check, lowering the Z value will bring the instances closer to your base object. If the shape has changed disproportionately, translating the instances along the Z axis might not solve the problem. In this case, we can add a scale instances node. If we uncheck local space, changes to the scale along the Z axis will move the instances up or down, respective to the base mesh. Changes to the XY axis will move the instances towards or away from the base mesh. Remember, the length of the instances is controlled by the scale input on the instance on points node. Selecting this button here will create a copy of the geometry node group that would be unique to this object. Any value connected to the group input becomes an input that can be changed from the modifier tab. For example, we can connect the Z scale factor, which is our spine length, the subdivision surface level, and the align to vector factor, which is the angle of the spines. You can then find them as adjustable values on the modifier tab. The benefit to this is that the value changes on the modifier tab only affect the object to which that modifier is applied. This means you do not have to use a copy of the node if your changes are only going to be on the modifier tab. And these basic techniques lead to a wide range of possibilities. I created a more detailed geometry node, which is available for download on Gumroad. The file contains three setups for different spine length configurations. Standard is for spines of the same length. Tall top adjusts spine length based on their position, and random randomizes the spine lengths. Add them to your mesh by going to the modifier tab and adding geometry nodes modifier and selecting the tree of your choice. For each one, you can adjust the size and rotation of the instances, as well as the subdivision, vertex and edge crease, and smooth shading of the base mesh. You can also customize the position of the spines. These trees include a single center spine and surrounding spines. The spines sit on a spine base, whose size and shape can be modified. For the center and surrounding spines, you can change the length, thickness, angle, and much more. Each part of the cactus spine instance can have its own material conveniently set from the modifier tab. This file is available on Gumroad for just $2. It includes the three separate geometry node trees as well as all of these models and materials you see here. If you check it out, please let me know what you think. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thanks for watching and happy blending.